people are still using the one drop rule that was used as a form of exclusivity like you're not white you're black because if you're going to be black when talking about black movements you need to be black the other 364 days of the year even if you're in the most white spaces that's how i feel <laughs> so everybody knows what this video is talking about because you read the title obviously and i just want to go into why so many biracial people with even an ounce of blackness tend to claim black only as opposed to claiming their entire like their full identity so if they're white and black instead of saying hey i'm biracial or hey i'm white and black they say i'm black it say i've seen i've seen this so much especially on tiktok and i don't know i just felt like it's always been weird like why don't you claim your other half because you're not just black and i don't i don't know but Actually, I do know that's what we're talking about it today, but we're going to go into that and the um, part two, we're going to talk about how the issues with conflating biracial people's experiences with undeniably black people full or full black people's experiences. So watch this first because this helps with understanding part two. But yes, we're going to get into this right now. Let's go. So the first reason is because of the one drop rule. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. I'm gonna read off my laptop simply because I feel like it's easier. So the one drop rule was a social and legal principle of racial class racial classification in the USA in the 20th century. It stated that any person with even one black ancestor was considered black. It was used to harden the rules of slavery and seg segregation because some people were invisibly black or as we call them today, white passing or racially ambiguous. So just to sum that up, people are still using the one drop rule that was used as a form of exclusivity. Like you're not white, you're black. I know that this is done just, you know, with biracial people on their own, but also I've noticed that some biracial people are forced into their blackness if they are racially ambiguous or biracial people who are undeniably black which is a thing i have a friend who's asian and black but if i look at her i see a black girl i don't she would have she would have to tell me that she's asian because i i didn't know that when i like first met her she looked black so those people who are raised in predominantly white spaces are well aware that they're not black i mean that they're not white because the people around them make it so known by the way they treat them i've heard so many experiences of people growing up in predominantly white spaces and just being ostracized and treated differently to the point where that was their identity they were not white they didn't get the same treatment as their white peers so their if their other side was black that's what they were you know and i guess you know you're still biracial you know, you're still white and black, but you're around, when you're around them, you're black. They're still applying the one drop rule. So also I feel like people who are biracial claim to be black because it's popular to be black now. And you're probably like, wait, like what? What are you talking about? Da -da -da. If you're biracial and you just claim to be black, hear me out, okay? Don't actually, don't take offense to anything that I'm saying. I just need you to hear me. The spotlight is on black people and black movements because of all the issues and topics that are being discussed and resurfacing and reoccurring within our community and being displayed on the media. That's why it's popular to be black right now. There's just the spotlight is on us. Let's just say that the spotlight is on black people right now. You know, so when people want to talk about black issues, they feel like claiming their blackness will give them that validity when they talk, you know, or, you know, make people listen because, you know, even though they're white and black, they're going to say they're black, you know, to get people to listen. So their experience is validated. And I feel like your experience can be validated without you saying that you're just black. You can say you're biracial and your experience can still be valid. So I just wanted to expand on this, but like I was saying, you can add your opinion and say that you're a biracial person. And I feel like that's important because it, it lets people gauge the perspective through which your opinions are coming through. Yeah, it lets people gauge the perspective through which your opinions are coming through because you as a biracial person, especially someone who looks biracial, who looks and 
racially ambiguous whether you know it or not you have experienced you have different experiences in your life than people who are undeniably black you know what I mean that doesn't mean that you haven't had some of the same experiences or similar experiences but they have been different you know what I mean if you are undeniably black but you are biracial maybe that's not so much so but if you look biracial which a lot of you all do or racially ambiguous you have different experiences so I think it's important not to conflate a full-on black person's experience with you as a biracial person and you do that by taking on the whole identity of just being black and I relate this in the sense of so let's say I start talk about, talking about colorism. I am a black woman just like a dark skinned woman is a black woman. I'm talking about dark skinned black women, right? We're both black women, right? Yet my whole life I have been brown skinned. Not one day in my life have I ever been dark skinned. Not one day in my life have I received the direct degradation that my black, black skinned sisters have received. You know what I mean? I have experienced colorism but it hasn't been to, I don't know, this, this great extent so when i'm talking about the perspective if, if i'm talking on the subject of colorism which i'm allowed to even though i'm not dark skinned i will not go into it saying i'm dark skinned like yeah i i'm black but i'm dark skinned like da -da -da, and then start talking on the topic of colorism because i'm not dark skinned i'm talking from the perspective of a brown skinned black woman and that is important and i have had different experiences dealing with colorism than many dark skinned black women have and those experiences don't need to be conflated at all but as far as us being in the spotlight, you had Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams during the election time. You had George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, and Breonna Taylor with the police brutality issues that are still going on right now. I know that this is not really here here, but you have the natural hair movement that's going that's still going on. You have black people taking a critical look into how they were raised and challenging the norms that their parents hit on them and their parents raised them through and you know turning it on its head and becoming better people from what I see so you have that going on in social media and you have many more things going on so when you have biracial people who want their needs or you know their their experiences to be heard and validated they try to denounce their white side and just claim to be black because they feel like their point will stand better if they just don't say that they're biracial that they just said that they're black which they're not lying kind of because they're not just black because you're asserting that you're just black and I don't understand this and people are like no I'm just saying da -da -da. like it's so weird because if you were saying that you were just white people look at you sideways because it's obvious that you're not and I, that's the same way I look at them when they say they're just black even if it's not obvious that you're not just black you're not just black and it's kind it's always been weird to me that you denounce one side of yourself yeah so when yeah so when they denounce their white side their Asian side their Hispanic side it bothers me because I wonder like when you're around your Hispanic, Asian, white, other communities, pr predominantly Asian communities, white communities, Hispanic communities, do you say you're just black or do you say you're biracial do, or do you just adopt the other culture if you're not visibly black? I always wonder that because if you're going to be black when talking about black movements, you need to be black the other 364 days of the year, even if you're in the most white spaces. That's how I feel. You cannot come on and talk about black issues and you're biracial and just claim to be black. And then when you're around your white people, oh yeah, I'm biracial, I'm white and black. No, you, like you said, when you were talking about the issue, you're black. So be black. People often criticize white people, fully white people, for performing blackness because they'll take elements of our culture and appropriate it or adopt it and then when they're done with it, they'll discard it, they'll put it to the side. And sometimes I feel like biracial people step into that and I feel like they step into it more easily than white people simply because they oftentimes they do have that little bit of melanin to their skin. So when they say they're black, everybody's like, okay, cool, you're black, da -da -da, but you're biracial. Anyway, next topic. Another re reason that I research, and I just know personally from knowing biracial people um, as to why they just claim blackness, is because if you say that you're biracial, if you are, especially if you're undeniably black, that doesn't mean that you're black, but like I said with my friend, if you look at them, it's no question, really, they just look black. Even if you're biracial and you're, if you're biracial, 
especially if you're undeniably black and you claim oh you introduce yourself as biracial white and black hispanic and black asian and black you get side-eyed from i feel like both sides of the community the black people are just like you're black though like why do you need to say you're white you're asian you're this like you're black and then sometimes the white side asian side other side is just like okay but you're not really like asian you're not really white you know what i mean like they, they get the once again the the person being in school around white people they're biracial half of them is white but they look ambiguous they look black so they get treated differently so that's I, I guess I understand the notion when biracial people are like hey I don't really fit in with the black people but I also don't fit in with the white people is that whole thing you know of people knowing that you are biracial but also you have different experiences as a biracial person especially if you were if you grew up around both sides of your family like the black side and the white side the Asian side and the black side Hispanic side and the black side so you have different experiences that people who are not mixed don't have piggybacking on what I said about um, black people sometimes feeling like you're distancing yourself from your blackness when you claim to be biracial it goes into you thinking them thinking that you feel like you're better than them because in the past and currently in the present there are people who are biracial and may have more Eurocentric features or something like that who feel like they are a notch above fully black people because they are biracial they are mixed with something else or they are light-skinned so that is a thing but also I feel like it's dangerous to assume people's intentions sometimes you'll hear exchanges like this so let's say I'm starting out as like the biracial person and let's say I'm undeniably black I just look black you know whatever and they you introduce yourself somehow it gets on the topic of race and they ask you like what are you I'm like yeah I'm, I'm white and black oh so you're black no no i'm really both really it's like girl like if they were to start slavery tomorrow you will be in the fields with us girl you black okay just like i guess i guess i guess you're right i guess i am black you don't know how many exchanges like that similar to that that i've seen you know and sometimes biracial people want to avoid that exchange so they just introduce themselves as black you know and I don't like how we're erasing people's identity. And once again, we're going back to using what slave owners use, which is the one drop rule. And I feel like we need to eliminate that and discard that and really, really identify people ha how they are. I know I was looking up races and what the categories are like on the census and it's so small. And I'm just like, I understand the difference between cultures and races and really it's only one race, but we ain't gonna get into that. Um, but like why is it so small to me there's like several races you know and i'm just like am i conflating it with cultures this that and the third but to me there's more races than it is on that little census situation or whatever but going back to that exchange while they may not be wrong like let's say they did start slavery again tomorrow they probably wouldn't be in the fields with us but i think it's not okay to make somebody conform to a certain identity that's not fully theirs just to make you more comfortable I don't like it so yeah that's my video on why some reasons why I feel like biracial people only claim blackness if you are a biracial person please don't think that I'm saying all this as a means to create another uh, weapon to divide us or anything like that I just simply feel like we should identify people correctly and that's gonna segue into my other video of the issue with conflating black people by and biracial people and people of color um people of color biracial people black people are separate groups don't get me wrong a lot of times we share similar or the same experiences so on certain topics it's not really it's not really useful to try to separate the groups but everyone has their nuanced differences and their different experiences being in those particular groups and i feel like we need to recognize that and highlight that and bring it to light and not conflate them all together because then i feel like some people's experiences aren't heard they aren't seen so in my book biracial people are biracial i don't care what part of blackness they have in them like to me, you're black if both of your parents are black, or if one parent is fully black, one parent is half black. Other than that, you biracial in my book. Is that is that wrong? I don't know. 
but please comment down below if you are a biracial person and give me your opinion on this you know I always ask people to be respectful so you know that's just all you have to do but you don't have to agree with me if you don't that's fine but if you're a biracial person who has black in them and you only claim to be black can you tell me why you only claim to be black as opposed to introducing yourself with all parts of your identity so yeah see you in my part two video it's coming